Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. When you want to package it, what is packaging? Creating a bar or a jar file, right? So what do we do? Maven package. When we do Maven package, folks, there's it, the target folder was empty, right? It bundles and it keeps in the target folder. See, this is a jar file that is created because I specified the version as this. If I change the version. It, it gets created with a different version. Instead of 001 snapshot, if I say latest snapshot, it gets created with the latest snapshot and it is bundling it as a ZAP file. If you see this, did you write anything in this or do you have anything like and, right? It's a very small XML file which is doing internally everything for you, right? And it's it's very easy. It's, it's very little effort. If you see, you know, I could do all this in less than 10 minutes, folks. Isn't it? Setting all the work script. That is. Uh -huh. Yes, so my lord. We are using log for day. Do we need to mention the dependency in this file? Yes, exactly. And if you're using Spring, we need to mention. Specify the, the, the dependency. Day. Exactly. So if I'm using this log for day, right? The group ID is log for day. The artifact, I mean, I just gave it here in the document as an example for adding log for the dependency. Right. So what what you need to do, you could just, you know, copy this dependency and put it here. You don't need to do that also. You just go to this dependency, you just add here, and say I want to add it as the group ID is J unit, J unit, and what is the version? One one two point one. Right? right. Let's say, you know, this it's log for I'm sorry. I can see the artifact ID as well. Right? And I'm saying it is compiled. The default, the default scope is compiled. Right? I say this. You see? It, it came for you right here. So if we are uh, using Spring, like ORG, Spring, or yes. whatever it is. Yes. If you just go to can... Google and just Spring Maven dependency, it, it gives you what is the artifact as well. Oh, okay, okay. And we, we just need to add it as a dependency, like different artifacts, thing has for ORM or, and all those things. You, you, you just need to know the artifact ID, sorry, group ID, artifact ID, and what is the version that you want to know. Let's say, folks, instead of this log 4 j 1.2.1, if I want a different version, what do I need to do? I just go here and I just need to change the version of it. I just need to change the version of it. That's all. When I added it, you see it has one more dependency. See, people find the design one comfortable to do that, and people will just do a copy paste and change it. Either it's, it's, it's your preference to do it. So, is it like we need to create Maven project each time? Or it's like uh, if I already have a project, I, I want to write a script for that one? Yes. See, let's say you were an architect. You uh, of the project, you created a Maven project. I when I come as a developer, I don't to create a new project altogether. I write my own modules, I write my own testages here, and it just takes care. Let's say if I'm using something new, right? Um, let's say I'm using a HTTP client for the consumption of a SPS web service, Apache HTTP client, right? What I put 
it is the project and everything has already been had already been set up by you. I just come over here and add my own dependency here. That's all. No, if uh, like uh, I have project already developed, like and I can add a script anytime after development of project also. What about uh, Maven? If yeah, I already have project? You can you can do at any time, but when you're doing it, you have to organize it, keeping all your code in Asasi main Java application code and all your skills in Asasi plus Java. That's what you need to do. Yeah, but it will be difficult, right? Because naming convention here is different. Like SRC slash main slash Java or something like that. Yeah, it's a naming convention that it has. Maven, is, Maven comes with some conventions as well and doesn't. Well, that's what I'm trying to ask because if we already have a developed project and uh, okay, let's. Uh, but you read the benefits of it. If, if you see, I mean, for, you have seen it, right? I have written so much of and script. Maybe, you know, I'm talking more towards Maven. I have personal inspiration for <laughs> Uh, but if you observe it right, the AND script, you have mentioned so many, uh, you know, it, it's verbose, or it's not about being verbose. Once it's written, you, I mean, it doesn't matter if it is verbose. You have to write so much of script to achieve the same thing what Maven does, right? You have to create different targets, as you also think. Where in the, I mean, what are the targets that are needed or the, are already defined as goals by Maven? Like the compile, right? So here, yes, the test, package, all these things, they are already defined as goals by Maven. You don't need to write anything to do that, which you have to when you are using AND. I think the Maven is easier. Right. If you know the syntax, everything, then it's easy to just to specify the few. Yes, it takes it it takes ten minutes for me to to do a Maven project. Not even that, right? I just say the few mouses I created project I done here. I I did setup of the Maven, and right as you have seen, I bundled it all for. It's just a simple Maven package. And folks, uh, just for running out of time, there is a Maven install. What it does is it packages and it copies to the repository. In the repository, you have this repository. Folks, what is my package here? Com. Com. Dot. Uh, uh, sorry, here it's com. So when I go here in the repository, you see that that's getting copied. When you say install, we haven't said it now, but when you say install, right, in this, when I say package, what it happens, it bundles it into a jar file, whatever it has to say. We ask it to bundle it into a packaging is jar. So it does it. But when you say Maven install, it packages and it copies to your repository. So, you know, you see, it's, it is installing to my repository, com, Maven 1, Maven project 1. And you know, inside that it is copying it. Yes, Joseph. When, whenever you are want to convert an existing project to Maven, you have to reorganize the Java file. You know, putting them into a in Java, you just get it into a test Java, and like when you have some resources, all the configuration files, we keep it in the SRC main resources. You know, it has to be organized. Easy in and then just like a script. You have to see even if your your if your project is not organized, you you have to tell and the this is where my source code is. After compilation, keep my classes here. We have to specify all the two and even we have to specify the var and all these things, right? No, uh, for the okay so personal preference. I mean, no, for an yeah. existing project, if you want to uh, do something, it's basically it's easy in uh, and because you have thousands of classes easy. in a project. Yes, you, want to arrange yeah, that you have thousands for of a... classes. You, you could just create an SRC main Java and keep all the packages in the SRC main Java. How much an effort is that? You have, I mean, there should be some folder or, you know, 
where you have all your packages, right? Just copy all the packages and put it in a certain name Java. Right? You just create a certain name Java folder and just move all your packages into a certain name Java. That's all. All your test cases into a certain name Java. And that's it. So you mean all the existing, like let's say if I have some old project and just copy all the Java file under that SAP main Java and that yes. we don't need to do anything else. N need to do anything else. Okay. It's Another thing is, mm -hmm. so we need to compile these like through the command line every time? Maven mm -hmm. compiler, those things? No. See, when you have the Maven second book, if you just want to update the dependencies, you want to add dependency, update the dependencies. You, you know, you can, you can just do a compile from here also. When you just do a project team, when you want to build a specific project, when it does, it, it actually, you know, do it from Eclipse. But why we do it from command prompt is sometimes these IDs have some issues. I mean, now it is like updated dependencies very fast. Sometimes when you have like huge workspace, it takes time to update the dependencies. It still seems to give you compilation error and all that. That's the reason we just uh, do it with command through the command prompt. You see, Maven build, Maven clean, generate buffer, install. You could you could do all that. That's everything, right? You see, it's it's it's, it's downloading this stuff file and all those things. You could just do it from here. That's what we do with and you just have, we, we could do Maven build, Maven clean, generate. Folks, when you, when one more thing, when we're sorry, whenever we use like the install and all those things, we do a clean also. Uh, just whenever you want to do an install, right? We say Maven Maven clean install so that it you know whatever they're in the target, it just delete and freshly do a compile and it packages it and it does install it into the repository. And I mean, using an SEM, we could actually. Okay, using an SEM, we, we could actually specify, okay, this is the path where this project is binded in the repository, like an SEM also. We could bind it and say all that. And if you want to copy to a different, you know, repository than your local. Right? We, we could. You could specify that in distributed management, you could specify a repository. And for this repository access, we need to make the changes in settings.xml file. There's a settings.xml file, where if you want to access to a repository, right, it has to provide the credentials and authentications for it, which we do in the settings.xml file. Okay, uh, yeah, these are different scopes wherein we provide the dependency. Maven looks easy than I believe. Yes, at least for me, it is. I tried to uh, migrate some project uh, uh, for Maven, uh, and it was very hard for me. That's why I was asking uh, how to add it in existing projects. Okay, no, see, there is a bit of hiccups, and I don't deny that it was a very big project, but you just need to organize your files into this. All your source code into this, and Maven does take care of that. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll try this one one more time. I guess this will work. Yes, folks. I mean, maybe if some of your requests doesn't have Maven, uh, I advise you to go to the Eclipse website, download the command Eclipse IDE for e developers. It gives you a couple version which has inbuilt Maven plugin. And folks, in the documentation, you have a command if you want to do a create a project. Now you don't have the techniques and all these things. Just use this command by specifying the specific group ID and artifact ID. It is created for you. You can just work it through command. You know, it's not easy to create classes and all, but you could do the commands at least from here.
and so there were you know sad thing around this like you know uh saying and let's say folks if i want to change from spin 2 to spin 2.5 to spin 3.0 what do you do with and you go remove the zar file get download the zar file so really put it in your project and you have to include it in the class right if you are saying start dot jar you don't need to do anything right you have to physically get it and put it but with name and you just need to change the version if i want to change a different version right so what i do i just change it i mean maybe this dependency is not I, i'm not sure i have the version of it or not but if i have it will you know th that get resolved right here when you change the version see folks when i said 17 the version is present and i got this jar file if you want to change it to it right that's all the dependency management is is it how simple it is and how fast so what you did and you have to changing the version did you run some compiler what the command you type no i just saved it i, I okay. didn't do anything i changed it to 17 and i did control l okay that's all and if you don't have a network then it won't get downloaded right yes you need to have it <laughs> that's what like i'm using and from long time see so. even for and you need to download it from somewhere and physically put it in the project right manoj yeah that's right <clears throat> even when you want to change the version in and you need the jar file you have to download it you need network for it right no i'm just asking like if when you're changing that yes yes you need download it that's why i was yes if you go your book it it actually you will actually see the new things coming up as uh, you go on adding the newer dependencies uh, you know they are of here j over the present inside the equation uh then it have you know the apache thing here apache form and all this and this right here all this So if you want to change the version, yes, of course you have. It is not an issue. But it's, it's a very simple change. I just change the version and say that I have a version. I don't need to get that specific jar. I get it for and go on. I'm not saying limit is like you know very easy. It has some understanding that you need to have on how to use it. It's all the dependencies, all those things. But still, when you go with development, right? The base of development will be very fast when you. you know, Because you could put it with a repository, you could easily bundle it with any SVN or you know any any repository and all that. So yeah, is this uh, version changing is for Maven or project or it's for Java? No, in the Maven project, I'm changing the dependency version. Instead of log four j thirteen, one point two point thirteen, I'm changing it to one point two point seventeen. so we can have our own version no it depends on usually it's, it's advisable to use the latest version but actually it, it depends on what version you want to use if i'm using some classes that are in 17 i have to use that right i cannot use 13 because those classes won't get resolved with that dependency right okay so any questions at least i know i advise you the more you practice and there are so many things to learn though but i mean try to create a maven project and see you know try to change this version and the package and then add more dependencies and see how they get resolved and you know try to add one out of the other we have created you know uh, a simple test case which came by default i'm saying so you can create like a sample code and you write your own test case and the maven test actually runs the test case for you Right, so it's it's not easy with and to run just that you have to write your targets to achieve and all that. But for and, just keep your test cases inside. If I have to test Java, that's all. Do Maven test, Maven clean test. You're good with it. So test cases running is very easy with Maven and like and, and no one can deny it. So, Neha, in the real-time environment, like in the <coughs> where you work the project, 
So do you, we have a choice which tool to use or like that's whatever the company is using, we need to do, I mean, use that. When you go in as a consultant, we are bound to use the build script or the technology stack, or whatever is already there. But, I mean, it's not a consultant of full time. Whenever you are there for quite some time, people have trust in you, you know, from the work that you did for quite some time, they'll give you a chance or they'll give an ear for listening on whatever you are saying. And that could affect the, the decisions, right? Okay. If you're using ads in your project, you're doing a good work, and you could go and tell your architect or whoever, like, you know, uh, your managers or something saying, you know, we have good advantages with me when this is what, you know, even there could be some time which we need to invest in migrating from and even but still we read the benefits going forth. If we, you know, you could convince. I mean, I'm just giving you an example. It could be it's available for any technology. Okay. Any questions, folks? We, we are almost at the end of our batch, right? The leftover is the JMS and JNDI. I think that's all. Folks, any questions? I request all of you to practice. To practice well. I mean, what are the projects that we did? I mean, there's more things that you could build on top of it, but still, like we have been, we, we did some, the basic structure, which like, you know, almost relating like the, uh, the projects front into back end or into the thing with high need and all those things, uh, you know, uh, please try to practice them, understand them, and try to build on top of it. So what we're going to learn tomorrow, JMX and JNDI? Yes. Okay. And folks, anytime don't hesitate to uh, reach me when you have any questions. I think today Saroj was reaching me for something. I was trying my best to help out. And, and finally, she's able to finish it. I felt like really happy when she said that. So folks, if you have any questions or something, please don't hesitate to reach me on email, even after the classes. I think we are all in the way of learning. We could help each other. And I could, I could do whatever is possible when you have some questions or concerns. So we can send the email, right? Yes, you can send me. Okay. You can send me an email. So, are you gonna say more or some intro questions or uh, with these latest <laughs> framework? Another. Uh... I mean, I think I already shared it. That's what I have. Uh, like the spring happening and all this thing. Is there any specific topic, Bhagwan? Are you looking for interview questions? I might go through those all, uh, so I need to check, like, uh... Okay. So I think I have, like, a core Java thing that hibernate. I mean, that's not end, but still, those are, like, the minimum questions that you have to know. I have some, I, I, I have shared XML and all these folks. Whoever hasn't received any interview questions from me, uh, please send me an email giving in subject interview questions. I should be able to reply back. Okay. Uh, Neha, I didn't get to it. Uh, Twinkle, please send me an email putting interview questions. I'll, I'll just send it to you, okay? Okay, okay, sure. Okay, folks, if you don't have any questions, let's call it today. And good night, everyone. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you're interested in a demo program, 
please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information if you still have more questions please feel free to call us call us at 770 Seven 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 one two six nine. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at zero two zero three three seven one seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.